Hey everyone, Justin Harmon with Stock Trader Jack, and today I'm going to show you how to make a stock data sheet right in Google Sheets using the Google Finance formula. And so I'm going to start by just showing you the formula itself, which is Google Finance, and then how to basically use this to create a sheet similar to like what you might see on, say, Google Finance with like previous close, open, and just creating your very own page of that. So first things first, let me just show you the uh, formula. Um, if, if you're not going to use a reference cell, this is how you would make the formula. You go ticker, so like Apple, comma, attribute, so we'll just go with something simple like price. Then you notice it asks for start dates and end dates. We're actually not going to really use those a lot in this uh, tutorial, but if you were going to use them, and I do show you this in a different video, and I'll link to that at the end, you would type in something like price date 1, 1, 2021, and then we'll go 3, 1 2021 and quotations and boom that would actually give you something like this if you were creating say like a chart but what if you wanted to create a page that was like this where you get like the previous close open uh, the 52 week high 52 week low what its volume is today its average volume how would you get all this information so today I'm actually going to show you how to do that and as a bonus, I'm also going to show you another formula, which I'm going to do in a different video and in more detail called import XML as a little sneak one here. So first things first, all of the attributes are things like being able to look at a stock's change, its earnings per share, 52 week high. And this, I actually link to this in the blog post. I'll give you all of the attribute names, what they are. This comes straight from Google Finance. And I'll show you how to make them into something like this. So let's just start with a fresh clean sheet. I'm going to start by typing in symbol and then I'm going to say Apple. We're also going to do price because I don't want to type in Apple every single time I do Google Finance. So I'm actually just going to have that be my reference cell. So you'll notice I'll click here. I'm going to type, I'm going to hit F4 to lock it in. So as I move this around, I don't have to change it. So first things first, I'm going to type in price. There is, you can actually link this to this cell and still get the result like that. I am actually gonna be typing these out today and I'll tell you why. And you'll notice I didn't type in dates or anything. That just means it's gonna give me the most up-to-date one. So price, uh, rather than put in the actual formulas, for example, like to put in the 52 week low, even if I wanted to get that, which I would go I'd make sure I had it referencing the right um, ticker cell and then this would give me the 52 week low which because I had that split would obviously look lower than it really was but here's the deal I don't really want it to say low 52 but if I were to go 52 week week low then it wouldn't know what to do with it so I'm actually gonna just show you how to find each one of these and I'm gonna do it quick so that way it's easier to reference because now that I've got the table in here that you can use, it'll allow you to find them really quickly and easily. All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna, hang on, I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna take this one away. All right, so first things first, previous close. If I wanna get that, I could either reference it through the formulas, which is on the page, or here's the, here's the ones that would be like the same as making one from Yahoo Finance. So you would use close, yes, open is just price open, high, low, high 52, low 52, volume, volume average or AVG, market cap, beta, price equity ratio or PE, EPS for earnings per share, and those, those are the ones that we use that make it look the most like the Yahoo sheets. And then, of course, you can go ahead and format this. I'll go ahead and make this yellow so that I can remember that that's the reference cell. And that's uh, this is known as also static, meaning that it doesn't change unless I change it. And these are dynamic, meaning that they'll change whenever I change this cell. So I can go ahead and change this to, like, Lulu. And it'll give me all the new info. I can change it to, like, Carnival. Planet Fitness, and basically, you know, anything else I want to look up, like Visa. And so it'll give me all that info. But what if I wanted to get the earnings date? 
So this one is the bonus. I'm going to show you how to use import XML. So normally that format, that uh, formula would look like this. Import XML, it lasts for the URL and the XPath. XPath is one that is usually a little more advanced. So I'm going to show you how I use it to make it a little bit easier for me to find the XPath. This is what uh, is almost kind of like a your directory on a web page. So the URL is easy enough. I can just go to Yahoo Finance, copy the URL, and I have to put quotations around it or it's not going to work. Also you'll notice that if I put in Apple, it's not going to match this one. So here's how I get around that. You just go ahead and close, you delete the ticker symbol, close it out with quotation marks, put an ampersand, and then reference this cell. And now, anytime I change the cell, it's going to update the URL for me, which is really cool. So what do I do for the X path? So I went to here the website, the Yahoo Finance, and I did Rex path. So you can download that. It's an extension for the web, uh, for your browser. And then after I right click it, I can go ahead and find this right here. This is your X path. It's the other way to do it is more like going into the website's you know guts here. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but it is because this is a little bit more complex is through that means. Or you can just type it out exactly as you see it here. But um, I don't put it in the formula itself because it has quotation marks and equal and minus signs and stuff, and that can complicate um, the actual uh, result. So I just have it reference the X path and then Voila. Now you'll notice it's kind of an ugly looking thing, so I can actually take it over here and then clean it up by going equals text. So this is what I would use to make sure it looks nice and clean. Month, day, and I'll just go year. Close that up. Ampersand equals and then reference the other one as text as well. This will give me a nice clean look. So I'm going to go month day, year, close, and voila. Now it gives me a much cleaner looking earnings date. And that's actually how you do it. And so you can go right onto my blog post and you'll be able to download this um, particular sheet right where I left off or you can create it right from the video as you see it like this. Other than that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you next time. Wanting to learn more about being a stock trader? Check out more free content at StockTraderJack.com. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.